God, would you then take those same people who mm. are in wickedness, Hallelujah. implant your purity, mm. and cause them to burn with the fire of the Holy Spirit mm. from this very Jesus. Moment. And we're going to be in verse 25 this morning. Psalm 119, 25. So, Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it causes life to come into us, that it encourages our hearts, that we are made wise by your word. We, we are comforted by your word because it's your voice. And as the scripture says, from your mouth come knowledge and understanding. I pray that we would hear your voice teaching us the word of God and it would enrich our hearts and our lives. It's in Jesus' precious name that we pray. Amen. Psalm 119, verse 25, the scripture says this. My soul clings to the dust. Give me life according to your word. When I told of my ways, you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts, and I will meditate on your wondrous works. My soul melts away for sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Put false ways far from me and graciously teach me your law. I have chosen the way of faithfulness. I set your rules before me. I cling to your testimonies, O Lord. Let me not be put to shame. I will run in the way of your commandments when you enlarge my heart. Verse 25. My soul clings to the dust. Give me life according to your word. What I love about this verse here is this is something we can experience often. You know, you look at the turbulence of the world. You think about the turbulence that comes to your own personal life that would try to draw you away from the presence of the Lord. The hardships, the persecutions, the the, the, the relationships in your life that aren't working the way that you want them to and, and you want God to be glorified, but it seems as if it, it's hard to get to that place. And so your soul, your mind, your will and emotions, it can cleave to the dust. Sometimes it feels low and it feels like there's despair and that there's no hope. But the writer here says, my soul clings to the dust. And his prayer is this, when my soul clings to the dust, I know to ask God this, give me life. But how's that life going to come? See, when, when our souls are overcome by the despairs of life and by the turbulations of life, there should be a prayer on our lips to God. We can't figure our way out of it. Our minds will never conceive um, to be more happy, to be more joyful, to have hope. All these things are found in God. The scripture says, that in the presence of God, we get renewed joy, renewed peace, and renewed hope. So when our soul clings to the dust, I want you to remember this verse. We pray this to God. Lord, give me life according to your word. Give me life according to your word. Jesus said this. He said, my words are spirit and they are life. The scriptures tell us in Proverbs that the commands of the Lord, when you find them, they are life to all who find them and healing to all their flesh. <laughs> they bring life. They bring encouragement. The scriptures tell us in Romans 15 that in the hardships of life that we come to the scriptures to be encouraged. We see what the, the Christians of old went through. We see what the saints of old went through and how they endured by trusting God. And as we read it, we then endure by trusting God as, the, as other Christians did from ages past. My soul clings to the dust. My emotions are in turmoil. My emotions are in the dust, Lord, but give me life according to your word. See, your emotions and your feelings, they fluctuate. They go up and down based on good things that could happen to you on the outside. But if we'll live by the sustaining power of the word of God, we can remain steadfast. We might feel things on the outside, but we don't have to let them cut us deep on the inside to where we can't take it anymore and to where we, we can't go on anymore. See, Jesus said this. 
man shall not live on bread, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. If you're not hearing the voice of God and the comfort of God and the wisdom of God leading and guiding you, I'm not surprised you feel famished. I like to bring this illustration in. Have you ever been really hungry and happy about it in your life? No. When you're hungry, what does that tell you? I need to go eat something. And then, you know, sometimes we're like, man, I could really go for some food, but you're not really that hungry, but you'll still eat. That's how we should be with the word of God. You know, I just ate of the word of the Lord, but I could go for some more. See, you can never have too much of the scripture. You can never be too built up in God. What you are is you're storing up for the time of trouble. You're being a wise builder. When trouble comes, I've got much of the word of God in my heart. I will not be moved when floods come and beat against my life and try to move me off of my, my course. I'm gonna remain strong and steadfast because I'm built on God. I'm built on the word of God, the everlasting foundation of the word of God. And if God can't be moved and you build your life on God, then you won't be moved because of God because of God in your life. Praise the Lord. That's the Matthew 7 reality. Turn to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. And Jesus also teaches it in Luke chapter 6. And what I love about Luke chapter 6 is before Jesus goes into explaining this, in Luke 6, 46, he says, Why do you call me Lord and do not do what I say? And then he goes on to teach this because it, that would be foolish to say, You are my Lord, but I reject your teachings and I don't build my life on them. And then Jesus goes into this. He says, everyone, in verse 24, Matthew 7, 24, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them, Meaning, you hear the words of Jesus, you hear the scripture, and you say, I'm going to practice these. I'm not just going to listen to it. I'm going to put it into practice. And as I put it into practice, I'm going to see the blessing of the scripture in my life. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them and practices them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. You know, I think we all really deeply in our hearts want to be somebody who's wise. Nobody wants to be a fool. Even fools don't think they're fools. <laughs> so, but Jesus said, hey, this person is wise who does this. And you know something? There's no way that you could build your life on the teachings of Jesus and Jesus not be pleased with your life. He didn't ask for you to do anything spectacular. He didn't ask for you to do anything great. All he says is, build my life on your teachings and you're a wise person. And the rain fell. See, this man built his house on the rock and the rain fell. The floods came. The winds blew. And look at this. And beat on that house. Have you been in any situation recently where it felt like winds were blowing, rain was falling, and it felt like things were beating on the house of your life? Now, let me ask you this next question, not to condemn any of us. How did you stand when that happened? Were you blown off your course or did, or, or did you stay on course? Did you retreat back to God and say, God, it's not that you can't say, God, I don't have the strength in and of myself. Lord, this is hard. It's not that. It's you've built your life on the word and you're standing strong, even if you can feel the beating coming on your life, the beating coming on your house. But it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock, the teachings of Christ that, that, that are firm, that are eternal truths. And everyone who hears these words of mine, everyone who hears the teachings of Jesus Christ and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house. But this time it fell not only did it fall, but and great was the fall of it. It fell hard. Why? That We can tell who's built their lives on the teachings and who has not. When trial comes, are you blown away? 
or are you still standing firm even though it's beating on your life? And I'm grateful to see you guys here because you've stood through trials. You've stood strong through trials. But I'm here to say there's more. There's more strength in God. There's more hope in God, more life in God than we even presently experience. And so back to Psalm 119.25, it says, My soul clings to the dust. Give me life according to your word. When my soul is in despair, I'm going to come to God and pray, Lord, give me life according to your word because your words are life. And without them, I will die. I need your words, Lord. Give me life according to your word. Verse 26. Look at this. When I told of my ways, you answered me. Teach me your statutes. What I like about this verse here is when I told of my ways, it speaks of me coming to the Lord in prayer. When, Lord, when I came to the place of prayer and I told of my ways, when I poured out my heart to you, I know you listened. He says here, it says, you answered me. I came to you. I poured out my heart to you. I told you what was troubling me. I prayed about it. And Lord God, you answered me. But after I get all of that off of my heart, I'm not just going to forsake you and go my own way. But once I, once I know that you've listened to me, now my heart is free to listen to your word. Teach me your statutes. See, that's a good pupil that the Lord wants. He wants to be able to teach us. He wants to be a refuge for us. The scripture says in Psalm 62, it says, come to the Lord, pour out your heart before him, for he's a refuge for us. He'll listen to you. He'll answer you. He'll help you. He'll aid you. There's a verse in Psalm chapter 138, which we will turn to that because I would like you to build your life on this verse when you're in the time of trouble. Um, it really helped my heart in a time where I needed strength. Psalm 138 verse three, it says this, on the day I called, you answered me, my strength of soul, you increased. Look at that. My strength of what? My strength of soul, my mind, my will, my emotions, my inner man was strengthened by you, Lord God. But notice it didn't say on the week I called, in the month that I called. It says on the day I called, you answered me. My strength of soul, you increased. Recently, I, I was coming to the Lord. I was like, Lord, I want more refreshing, more renewing in you, more strength in you, Lord God. I want to know deeper levels of your power in my inner man, God. I need you, Lord. And so on the day that I called to the Lord, he answered me and the strength of my soul, he increased. So take this verse as a promise to you that when you call on the Lord in the day of trouble is the same day you will receive the answer of strength in your soul. It's not something that you mustered up. It says God increased the strength of my soul. You cannot make yourself stronger. You cannot make yourself purer. You cannot make yourself more holy. You must come to God and let him do all of this in you. When I told of my ways, you answered me. Now teach me your statutes. He has this understanding that if he'll build his life on the statutes of the Lord, all will go well with him. This speaks of the prayer and the word being the primary things that we could do with our life and our relationship with the Lord. I tell the Lord what's on my heart. I receive answer from the Lord. It speaks of fellowship. It's not just me talking. He then answers. He talks back to me and then he teaches me. And this should be a repetitive cycle day by day. And though outward things will, will grow worse and worse at times, at least your inward man will be renewed every day. Now, verse 27 it's piggybacking off of teach me your statutes. He says, make me understand the way of your precepts and I will meditate on your wondrous works. Meaning I see your commands. I see your precepts in the scripture. I see what you've ordered us to do. You've told us to keep your precepts diligently. You, you, you tell us the way to live, that we should live sexually pure, that we should live a life where even anger might try to seize us, but we don't sin with it. Um, trouble might come to our lives, but we don't go seek out vices. We seek the Lord. Lord God, you've, you've shown me the way of truth, but cause me to understand these things deeper. Cause them to be deeper in my heart and instructing my life in a more powerful way so that 
I live them in a deep way. It's who I am on the inside and it works its way to the outside. Make me understand the way of your precepts. And look at this, and I will meditate on your wondrous works. One way we can look at that is this. When God teaches you, when God is instructing you, when he's guiding you, when he's doing a deep work in your heart, you can start to think about, wow, God has made me more kind in him. He's made me more loving in him. He's caused me to have more joy in him. He's caused me to have more peace in him. He's made me more gentle in him. He's made me more faithful in him. He's given me self-control in him. When we see the fruits of the Holy Spirit working in our lives because God has taught us deep within us, then we'll start to meditate on his wondrous works and thanksgiving will erupt in our hearts back to God and through our mouths. Lord, I praise you for your wondrous works. I praise you that you've changed me. And not only have you changed me, I've seen you change others around me. This is the call of every Christian, that God would first do a deep work in us and then through us, he'd do a deep work in others. Now, verse 28, my soul melts away for sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Here we go again. In verse 25, we saw, Lord, give me life according to your word. So it causes us to live. The word of God causes us to live. Without the word of God in our hearts, we have no life. But here, even when you're alive, I love what the scripture says. If you live by the spirit, walk in the spirit. Meaning there's people born again that are alive in the Holy Spirit. But there's times they're not walking in the Holy Spirit. And here you can be alive because of the word of God. But having no strength in God. And so... Sorrow, when it comes to your life, when, when there's hard times around, when people are doing unthinkable things, you don't understand why they turn their back on you, this, that, or the other, whatever it may be, whatever could possibly come to your life that brings sorrow and a sense of bitterness to your life, and your soul is melting away, your mind and your, your will and your emotions are suffering because of it. You're, you feel under a burden of an attack on your mind. My soul melts away for sorrow. This is your prayer. Strengthen me according to your word. Your life is in the word of God. Your strength is in the word of God. Your nourishment comes from the word of God. To not be nourished by the word of God is to spiritually die of starvation. You know, we, we see the pictures of people suffering because they're malnourished. And we think that, wow, we're, we are really blessed because we can physically eat, but it's a shame to see how people don't spiritually eat. So what's the point of boasting in that we have all the material needs we could need or, or that we always have food and stuff like that when we're spiritually starving? Let's eat and eat of God. Let's eat of the bread of life. He said, if you eat of me, You'll have life. My soul melts away for sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. And let me pray that for you before we go on. Lord God, strengthen your people by your word. As the scriptures go forth, may they give life to your people. May they strengthen your people. May they nourish your people. And may they stand firm, stand strong. Actually, may it be even more that your word as Jeremiah said, may they eat it and may it become the delight and the joy of their heart. That's what I pray for your people, God, in Jesus' name. My soul melts away for sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Verse 29. Put false ways far from me and graciously teach me your law. Lord, I don't want to live a life that is in corruption. I don't want to be deceived. I don't want to hear false preachers telling me that I can continue in sin, that I can, that I can live any way that I want to. Lord God, put away false ways far from me, but graciously teach me your law. I want to know the truth. And what I love about what Jesus says is he says, when the Holy Spirit comes, he'll guide you into all truth. And so we can have a bold confidence that if our heart is ready to seek God, God's ready to teach us. And we don't have to fear that we're gonna 
give heed to, to, to false ways, but we can trust that God will lead us into the truth. And here's the proof you have the truth, the freedom from Christ that it brings into your life, the joy that it brings into your life, the peace it brings into your life, the purity that it brings into your life, the holiness that it brings into your life, but not a holiness with a sour face, holiness with a joy-filled face. Because as he is holy and as he is extremely, endlessly joyful, so shall I be in him. Put false ways far from me. Lord God, don't let me fall trap and victim to false teachings, but graciously teach me your law. Teach me the truth because those that abide in your word and abide in the truth will know the freedom of God. Now, verse 30. I have chosen the way of faithfulness. I set your rules before me. And might I say to you, those and only those who set the rules of God and the commands of God before them are the faithful followers of the Lord. Turn to John 8, 32. John 8, 32. We'll start in 31. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, and I'm saying to you who have believed in Jesus, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. And we'll stop there first. If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. Meaning what? If you do not abide in Jesus's word, you are not his disciple. You can be around Christianity. You can hear about Christianity. You can affirm Christianity is a good thing and it's done a lot of good to others, but you're not a disciplined learner of Christ. If you abide in my word or if you continue in my word, Jesus says, you are my disciples. And here's how you will know if you are a true disciple of Jesus. And you will know the truth. So the question is, do you know the truth? Well, yeah, I know the truth. All right, well, here's the next question. <laughs> If you know the truth, the Bible says, and the truth will set you free. So you claim you're a, follow, you're a believer of Jesus. Okay. Are you abiding in the word? Yes. Okay. Are you truly a disciple because you abide in the word? Yes, you are. Okay. Then you know the truth. Yes, I know the truth. Are you free? Are you free? Does sin have control over you or do you have control over it? Is God controlling your life or is Satan controlling your life? Freedom's offered to everybody that would want to be a disciple of Christ. The reason it's set up this way is turn to Matthew 11, verse 28. Matthew 11, verse 28. This verse is quoted much and misunderstood much. Matthew 11, 28 says this. Come to me. This is Jesus. Come to me. All who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. All right, you can't just stop there. Jesus says, come to me. Meaning, if you're, if you're under a heavy burden of life, Jesus is saying, if you're gonna come to me, you're gonna find rest. It's gonna be wonderful. But there's a way that this rest comes because many people are coming to Jesus, or at least they think they're coming to Jesus, but they still have no rest. It says, take my yoke upon you, and learn from me. That's the key. When you'll really find rest in Jesus is when you start learning from Jesus. Because when you put his teachings into practice, the Bible says this, all of wisdom's paths are peace. Meaning, Jesus said the person who's wise builds their house on the teachings of Jesus. You know what that means? If you build your life on the teachings of Jesus, whatever you do in life, all of wisdom's paths are peace. Meaning, no matter what you do in your life, if you've built your life on the teachings of Jesus, peace will flood your life. Because God's word is watching over you. God's spirit is watching over you. Your integrity will protect you, the scripture says. So take the yoke of the Lord upon you. Some people say that that yoke means this. The rabbi's teachings were the yoke. 
So Jesus is our rabbi. He's our teacher. And when we take on his teachings, when we learn of Jesus, we will discover this. He's not a harsh master. He's gentle and lowly in heart. Did you know that there's a lot of Christians that think God is a harsh master? Now, to those who reject him, the Bible says he makes himself appear that way. Meaning, if people see him that way, they're probably rejected. They probably are not abiding in the presence of the Lord. They probably are not seeking the Lord. But when you come to the Lord and you start to get to know him, you start to discover what he says is true. He's gentle and lowly in heart. And he says this, and you will find rest for your souls. He's not trying to add a yoke of slavery to you. He's trying to take the yoke of slavery off of you. He's trying to take the bondage off of you and tell you that all of his paths are peace. So practice his ways. For he says this, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Many people think his yoke is hard and his burden is heavy. It would be hard to serve God with a hundred pound sack of sin on my back. But if you'll let him take the hundred pound sin off your back then you'll start to walk in the freedom of his grace and you'll be light as a feather serving the lord with joy and gladness psalm 119 verse 30 i have chosen the way of faithfulness i set your rules before me so i pray that all of us in this room today would choose the way of faithfulness and that looks like this a life continually feeding upon jesus's word to not stray from it. Faithful means to continue on. Continue on, continue on. And on that day, what does he say to those who, who what we want to hear? Well done, my good and faithful servant. If we forsake him, we're not faithful to him. It, it's that simple. But he's not like, we get under the burden of, I have to do all these great things. And he's saying, no, just be faithful. Just show up. Just continually coming to me, continually growing in me. And don't be the judge of your own life to where if you don't think you're growing fast enough, you need to be beat up about it. Look at the victories he's bringing into your life. Look at the victories over sin he's bringing to your life. Look at the joys he's giving you. When's the last time you had joy in the presence of the Lord in your own personal time? I'll tell you what, for me, that's, my, that's when my alarm bells go off. If I've not had private time of joy with God, it's not long before you are straying. Because God didn't set up this life so we could be miserable. He wants us to be happy, but we're only really going to be happy in him. So most people, oh, I haven't spent time with the Lord. Now I got to go get beat up by God in the presence of the Lord because I haven't been with him. When, when you said, I want to go be with him, that was supposed to be the starting point where it only gets better. You don't, God's not bludgeoning you in the secret place. You're bludgeoning you in the secret place. Let God refresh you in the secret place. Now look at this, verse 31. I cling to your testimonies, O Lord. Let me not be put to shame. I see your word. I see your greatness. I see what you've done into the, in the past. I cling to it. I remember how you parted the waters. I remember how your people walked through on dry ground. I remember how you plundered their enemies and they even took riches out of Egypt with them. I thank you for that in the past. And then we bring our own testimony into this. I cling to your testimonies, your faithfulness, O Lord. Let me not be put to shame because I, I cling to my testimony, how you brought me out of darkness into light. Lord, continue walking with me. I don't want this testimony that I've declared before so many people. I don't want to be put to shame by turning away and growing dull in it. I want to continue on fire and alive to it. I want it to be what I feed on daily, that it's rich and fresh daily. And the Bible says those who continue in the presence of the Lord, those who abide in the presence of the Lord will be rich and fresh in the presence of God, even to old age, rich in God and freshness of spirit. That is the inheritance for those that make God the joy and the delight of their heart. And the Bible says this, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. If you choose to take delight in God, God will give you more of himself. Now, lastly, I will run in the way of your commandments when you enlarge my heart. Or as you increase my understanding, 
I'm going to be even more faithful to your commandments. When you teach me your commandments, I'm not going to be slow to keep them. I'm going to run in the way of your commandments. It's going to be the, the primary goal in my life is to be is to honor you by keeping your ways in a wicked and adulterous generation. I'm going to shine with the glory of God that's revealed in Jesus Christ as I keep your word faithfully to the end and choose not to compromise. May that be us. I will run in the way of your commandments, God, as you enlarge my heart, as you increase my understanding, as you show me more of of what this walk of righteousness is, what this walk in the Holy Spirit is. As you teach me, I'm gonna be faithful and put it into practice and glorify the name of God unto the day he comes again. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it teaches us, it instructs us, it makes us wise and gives us understanding. We love to know you by your word. We love to grow up into your word. I pray that we would crave the pure spiritual milk of the word of God like a newborn baby. And that as we partake of that milk, we grow up into a full experience of salvation. Lord, be glorified from this gathering through the rest of this week. Strengthen your people and cause them to be faithful this week. And to see the goodness of the Lord while they're yet in the land of the living. To see victories over sins that they were struggling with. To see victory over attitudes that were, were tearing them down. When their soul cleaves to the dust, Lord God, revive them according to your word and strengthen them according to your word. And may we come back singing for glory because testimonies abound of your faithfulness to our lives. It's in Jesus' precious name that we pray and everybody said amen and amen. All right, well, Sam loves you. More importantly, Jesus loves you. And First Love Church loves you. Have a blessed Sunday in the presence of the Lord. Thank you.